Most people have more fear than faith and their karma is going to keep bringing them back what they spend the most time obsessing over. She is dark as obsidian and it is light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could they be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and the Heezy Original Wireless Woman. And welcome back to my spot, room 303. If you are new, Welcome to the crew. But returning, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome, welcome back, welcome back, Wi-Fi to the wireless woman. And you already know what we came to do. It is time to call the roll. I need all my Wi-Fi women and my Bluetooth brothers to the front of the class to read aloud. All right, first things first, I'm the realist. No, just kidding. But I do want to thank all of my viewers and subscribers for coming back episode after episode to just hang out and chill with me. So today's episode is called Karma, 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 Chameleon. And I'm not sure if you can tell by the title, but we're going to talk about karma. But before we do, I want to give a little icebreaker. There are some interesting things about me that maybe y'all would want to know. So I myself am left-handed. So a lot of times when y'all see me, which is crazy because my best side is my right side. But whenever y'all see me, I generally always do my eye makeup on the left side. And even though it's kind of a subconscious thing because it's such fine point work, it really does take my left hand to get it on this side that precisely. Like whenever I try to do the same thing on this side of my face, it, it just never goes well. But I also feel like doing my left eye is an homage to left eye. And, you know, she was a person that took some very toxic habits and traits in her life and really turned it into power. You know, she was doing lots of awesome things with Dr. Sabi in South America when she passed. So you just give a little moment of silence for my left eye and for left eye in the spirit. You know, I definitely want to transition in my own life in a lot of ways that I saw her doing it, especially with taking more responsibility for my diet. You know, health is really wealth and everything that we can do to make the body stronger, to make it capable of working on its own, that's really the best thing. Your body is the most perfect machine that nature has ever made. And when it is empowered to do its job, it's really amazing. Your body is a miracle. Your body is a wonderland, as John Mayer would say. And we really have to learn how to unlock the power that we already possess within ourselves if we expect to reflect the glory, really, of God 
in our bodies, what I like to call the God body. You know, God exists as this consciousness out in the universe, but we embody that consciousness. It's the God body. It's when, when God wanted to reveal himself to men on earth, he fashioned a body, you know? And so now that his spirit is here amongst us, we have to really, really look at ways that we can express the God body. Which brings us back to our topic at hand, which is karma. So our Western understanding of karma is that it is the Avengers. Like it's literally Captain America and Thor out in the universe collecting all the evil bad deeds that people have done and bringing vigilance on those that dare to do ill to others. But the Eastern understanding of what karma is, is literally just intention in action. Karma is neither negative or positive. It is simply intention in action. It is simply coming up with a thought, a motivation, an idea in your mind and bringing it about in some physical, tangible way. That's it. Karma is neither good nor bad. It's just karma. And most people that are very familiar with the concept of karma study Eastern religions like Hinduism and Buddhism and Taoism. And I have to be honest with you. Um, when I was in college, I was going through a spiritual awakening and I have studied the tenets of just about every major religion. I have delved into Hinduism, Buddhism, um, Islam, Christianity, and several different sects of Christianity. I was raised Jehovah's Witness, just like most of the weird Christians that you know. <laughs> and I've also studied Mormonism. Yeah. Yeah. So I was on a journey to find out who God was. And you find so much wisdom about the manifest presence of God through just being that open minded. I came to Christianity through an experience with God that led me to accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Lord and Savior. But I honestly believe that if I hadn't been so spiritually well-versed, I could not have walked that path of enlightenment that led me to a deeper revelation of what Christianity would come to be in my life. I believe, I find myself diametrically opposed to many, many Christians. And I think the reason why is because I took time to develop such a deeper consciousness of what God is, not just as a personal relationship, but also as a universal force. You know, until you understand what God is to other people, including atheists, you will not understand what God is to you. Karma is just like the spirit. It is just a force that exists to bring about the will of people. The good and evil that karma carries out derives its identity from people's intentions. It's the same way with God. People will find God in the expression of their own intention. If you don't have a very high self-image about yourself, then God is going to be a punishing extracting God. He's not going to be this loving, kind God if you don't first start with self-love. If you're conditioned in an environment of anger or bitterness or resentment, then your God is going to reflect that. That's why it really takes being so much more open-minded to embrace your own identity in him. Because God is going to always be a reflection of what you think about yourself. That's why I say things like the black woman is God. And I know that's triggering and polarizing for people whose concept of God is over here. But for people who have reached down into the recesses of themselves and searched the universe for the consciousness of what God is, they more than likely found it within themselves. And that's not to say that that's how far it goes, but when you find it within yourself, then you can connect the knowledge of self to the collective consciousness of God. Because even God exists in relationship with himself. God says, let us, y'all, me, us, make man 
in our image. So we were derived from a collective consciousness. Like for anybody <laughs> that thinks anything different, you got to find that for me. You got to find that of scripture. There's always been this dialogue, this discourse. And if your religion is calling for you to not be able to have exchange and evolve in your view of who God is, you know, you're staying static in one place. And because karma is this force that works off of your intentions, when your intentions don't continue to evolve, well, your karma is going to be very static. So the reason why I decided to talk about karma is because I see it being misappropriated. It's like cultural appropriation, how we just snagged karma and said, come here, karma, that's what you are. That's what you do. So when I began to understand that karma was not a force that was at my behest, that I couldn't commandeer karma, I had to start to realize that my karma was an extension of my intentions and my beliefs and my actions were carrying that out. Karma is not control. And we try to use karma as this cosmic balance that's going to set right all the wrongs. But that's not the function of karma. A person's individual karma cannot be applied to someone else or even what they do for other people. I think we always think that if we put these weights on the scale and balance out the good and bad that we do, then karma will never come back to extract anything from us. But that's not how karma works. You know, if everyone else is going to get back all the bad that they do, then what does that mean for you? Because none of us are perfect. All of us have things that we have done for which we are not very particularly proud. So karma is used as a tool of enlightenment. Karma is nothing but understanding. I had someone super cool, Hoover Iking, say to me one day that love is nothing but higher understanding. Love is nothing but a higher understanding, and that's all. And when I think about all the people that I love, they're people that I just made the intentional investment in getting to know. They're people that... They are people whose actions I excused, like how the Bible says love keeps no record of wrongs. It's kind. It's patient. These were people who I was committed to gaining a deeper knowledge and understanding of. And that is love in a nutshell. That's what created love. And karma is the same way. It's just a force. The same way that we invest in getting to know other people so that we can show them a more perfect love, karma is a perfecting force. You cannot apply it to anything <laughs> that you do for people or that people have done to you. I know that hurts your feelings. But when you invest in people that hurt you and are harmful to you, you lower the amount of positive karma that can come back from that situation. I know you think that if I just throw love and kindness and acceptance at people who hurt and destroy me and smear my character, somehow the universe is going to reward me for that. But no, karma's job is to teach you that that doesn't benefit you. Karma is teaching that other person that same thing. But there are a lot of people that are going to be like beasts of the field. They're going to spend their whole life on the program, on the treadmill, on the circle. Because all we ever do really is to work for food. If people didn't have to work in order to have food and a place to live and do things that they like, they wouldn't. <laughs> they just wouldn't. You know, there are some people who have passion projects and things that they put their time and energy into. But if those things don't allow them to be able to have food and a place to live and do things that they like to do, well, they're going to have to get a job or get someone who has a job that will do those things for them. But most people are going to get up, go to work come home, watch TV, or go out with friends, or whatever they do when they get off work, go to bed, get up, and do it again. 
You know, they're not going to ask questions about their life. They're not going to dwell on things they've done in the past in an attempt to learn from them and to change and perfect their life. A lot of people don't want to be perfect. They don't even want to improve. You know, our karma comes from what we eat. It comes from what we ingest. It comes from what we're entertained by, what we allow in through our eye gates and our ear gates, and no one else controls that but you. If you've got a low self-opinion man, when people mistreat you, do you wrong when you stay on jobs that you hate with bosses that are oppressive that is your karma the thing that's being given to you that should teach you and train you to do better and to want better for yourself to make changes i eat this and it makes me sick stop because continuing to eat that that is your karma being stuck in cycles that is your karma. Being in an abusive relationship is not perfecting you. It is your karma. It is the reflection of your consciousness. It is whatever that is inside of you playing its way out in natural, tangible form. Just like the Holy Spirit is God's active force, karma is your active force. And you are never getting anything out of your karma that's not reflective of your intentions, of your psyche. Most people are ruled by their fears. Most people believe in what they fear more than they believe in themselves. Most people have more fear than faith and their karma is going to keep bringing them back what they spend the most time obsessing over. They call these people influencers. We're being influenced by demonic people. We're being influenced by people that spread darkness. In our culture, we don't understand this because we've been taught by Western religion and Western society, government, and customs to believe certain things. We have capitalistic views that keep us out of balance with nature. The more and more that we entertain having to be the same in order to be great, that's your karma. You become common when you're no longer different. And we're literally in a copycat society. And that's your karma. That unfulfilled feeling is your karma. It's coming out of you. You know, and you can drink it away, smoke it away. You can do all of these things to try to feel full. You can eat it away. <laughs> you can do all of these things to try to feel full. But that hungry ghost in Buddhism, that's your karma. Because you fear feeling empty. That's the thing that you're always chasing on the hamster wheel. So I hope this conversation about karma brings some enlightenment. Because that's what karma is. It's all the lessons that you're learning that are bringing you and perfecting you to your highest self. But that's not going to happen if all you accept is negativity. That person that did you wrong, your karma is not going to come back to them. I know you're waiting on the great ghost in the sky to level the playing field, but the only thing you're going to get when you discard a toxic person who has brought your self image of yourself down to the ground and then got a shovel and buried it six feet underneath that, the only thing that you're going to get in return for all of the dirt and dust that that person promised you in your relationship that you were willing to accept, that pouch of magic beans that you took off that person. The only thing you're going to get for that is somebody else with that same image of you, with those same plans for you to show up right after they get done. Because you've shown the universe, bring me this. I will cherish this. I will value this. I will give my energy and my time to this. This is who I am. This is the highest expression of myself. 
is to love other people that don't love me, that hate me. So if you're really going to remove that type of energy, if you really want your karma to be as good as you see yourself as a person, you have to start with valuing yourself at that point. You have to start by valuing yourself at that place. At the place where you want the love and acceptance and appreciation of another person, you have to start with yourself. Because then when you start with yourself, you can manifest that out to other people. And then your karma begins to be something that not only you can appreciate and love about yourself, but that attracts other people who want to express that type of karmic energy. Because your karma is yours and their karma is theirs. And for people who are seeking that type of enlightenment, who are seeking to perfect themselves and their image of themselves, just for themselves, just so that you wake up and look in the mirror and be like, hmm, nice. You have to have other people around you that are doing that for themselves. Not for you, not to gain your love and approval, but for themselves. And I'm going to tell you something, somebody that's got good karma, they don't want to be around people that are in bad karma. So the only way you're going to attract someone that's going to love and appreciate you the way you love and appreciate them is if they are first loving and appreciating themselves. And if they are and you're not, they don't want you. And if you are loving and appreciating yourself. That's the only way you can manifest and project love onto another person is to have a deeper, higher, more understanding of yourself. So if you felt that, if, if that got down in your karma, go ahead and drop a headphones emoji for me in the comments. So as always, I am Danny and Nikki. Your wireless woman, thank you for spending time with me. Class is now dismissed. I'll see you in the next one.